Hello, this is Danny Draven. I am the writer, director, and producer of The Offerings, and welcome to the audio commentary track. It is uh, April 7th, 2015, and I'm here to uh, talk to you a little bit about this movie that I made uh, in Nevada. Um, as you can see, this uh, wonderful landscape here um, is actually, uh, that's actually Red Rock Canyon. Um, and uh, just outside of Las Vegas. Um, in fact, we shot the entire movie uh, in Nevada, uh, just in, in Las Vegas, just outside of Las Vegas, I should say, um, uh, up in the mountains, um, near uh, right, right near Red Rock Canyon, which is what you're looking at right now on the screen. Um, we shot it in, oh, let's see, it was December, actually. That's why you see some snow-capped mountains and uh, it was actually very cold where we were, where we were shooting. Um, lots of people don't know that uh, um, Las Vegas actually does get snow. It's not all uh, hot all the time, uh, particularly in December. Um, yeah, th this road out here that uh, we're driving up is actually, um, a, they call it the Widowmaker because so many people have died on this road. It's uh, um, kind of a, I, I, I think it's kind of like a, a treacherous road because um, it's just kind of a one-lane road, and it goes up over the mountain, um, heading heading towards uh, Pahrump. And um, I actually, personally, almost got killed, uh, along with the entire crew, in that car. Um, we are actually in the back seat right now when she's doing all this uh, action. There's uh, uh, Mike King, who is our my director of photography, who is uh, sitting on an apple box uh, in the middle of the car, holding a. Uh, holding a, a, a movie cam compact, a 35 millimeter camera, um, and as, as well as uh, two ACs and me, myself uh, squeezed in the back there uh, holding a monitor. <laughs> and we ended up uh, driving all around uh, the nearby roads to get all those shots you saw in the opening. Um, a little dangerous at times. Um, and I don't recommend you do that if you're a filmmaker, but um, anyway, we I guess uh, we did it and we all survived, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we're we're at this house uh, that we we rented. Um, I I've made a lot of um, independent films, and uh, one of the big savers on independent films is your locations. You know, because locations, uh, particularly in Los Angeles or any of the big cities, are incredibly expensive. I mean, thousands and thousands of dollars a day to rent and insurance and this and that. Um, so I had the idea on this film that I was going to rent a house. Um, this house actually has never been used in a movie ever before. It's, uh, uh, it was a, a private residence and uh, I ended up renting it for, I believe it was two months. I think I rented it for the entire month of November and the entire month of December. And um, what I liked about the house was that um, it had, it was about, I think it was 6,000 square feet. It had an upstairs and a, a downstairs with a separate apartment and a, oh, it had like a horse uh, stable in the back and some extra land and woods and whatnot. And I just looked at it as basically a movie lot for us to shoot this entire film. So I rented it for two months, and uh, we shot this this film in, um, shot it in ten days, I believe. It was ten days, um, and there was also a a uh, six car garage downstairs, and I I have shot in a lot of small areas, and a six car garage to me was a soundstage. So we uh, we turned the the entire garage into a soundstage. I actually built. Um, a lot, some of the sets you'll see here in, um, in, a, in a few minutes. Uh, we built all the sets downstairs uh, from scratch. We brought up all the materials and dirt and uh, wood and everything to build to build those. And uh, this is a very low budget film. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I want to give you the <laughs> give the budget away here, but let's just say it's it's a very very uh, uh, low budget uh, production. Um, and um, you know, we so every little thing that you see in this house uh, was borrowed from friends and family and pawn shops and Goodwill and all the usual places. I mean, this house actually, when I when I rented it, um, was in fact completely empty. So the couch, the the drapes, the 
the the Buddha. I mean, everything that you're seeing on the screen we had to bring in. And this location was 30 minutes from the nearest, you know, anything really, because it was far up in the mountains. So um, we really did have to haul everything up there. And then when it was done, haul everything back. Um, but, you know, it worked out in the end. And uh, it was a, probably a little bit more work than I, I had wanted. But... Um, in the long run, I think we we did we did a pretty good job for uh, hauling it all up there. In fact, um, one of the ways I saved money on the movie um, was I went to a furniture place, a local uh, sort of mom and pop furniture place, and I just told them I said, "Hey, you know, all your furniture is just sitting here. It was used furniture." And I said, "How about I just rent rent the furniture? I rent a, rent a bed, rent a couch, rent a rent the pictures, rent the." you know, all these little accessories and, and I just want to rent it for about, you know, two weeks and then, you know, you can drive it up, drop it off. And then you can, when we're done with it, you can come back in two weeks and get it. And, and then you, of course, I, you know, I'll pay for that. So you're essentially, you know, making money off of renting their, their, uh, used <laughs> furniture. So anyway, I made a deal. I made a deal with that company and, uh, was it, that's one of the ways I was able to get a lot of the furniture up there and not have to actually buy, pay full price for it. Um, this set actually is completely built. This is the six car garage that I was telling you about. Um, I just took the existing, um, I took the existing walls that were of course already um, on the, in, in the garage and then over there in the back, um, well, we're not there anymore now, but in, 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 sort of in the, behind our lead character here, uh, we, we completely built all those uh, brick uh, flats and, 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 and brought in all the dirt and all the and all the bricks some of that brick is real some of it's not you know uh, it was a pretty big adventure I should probably tell, introduce the actors to you here I mean I know their names came up already but this uh, this is right here is Marina Marina Risa and she plays Alyssa in the film this is Shirley Toe uh, plays uh, um, Mrs. Wu and uh, Shirley actually um, little fact about Shirley she is, she's actually a rocker she's a um, a musician uh, she's actually a bass player and I believe she plays with the band I don't know the name of the band I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head but uh, it's Juliet Lewis's band uh, she plays bass in that band and, uh, and she does uh, quite a she's pretty pretty darn good too so uh, yeah Miss Wu is a rocker <clears throat> And uh, this, this is this is uh, Akiko Sh Akiko Shima over there on the left, and Akiko has been in a lot of stuff actually. Uh, she was in uh, um, Letters from Iwo Jima, um, the Clint Eastwood movie, and uh, a couple other movies. And uh, she really, she really did a great job with her sort of quiet, mute character in the movie. Um, they're actually. You know, in this scene, is uh, they're actually eating Panda Express, believe it or not. I know it probably looks like it if you look a little closer. But uh, Panda Express was the only place we could get Chinese food in anywhere remotely near to this place. So uh, we brought one down. They're actually eating um, pretty cold Panda Express, too, because of the amount of times we did the takes. And by the time they ate it, it was, it was cold. Um, so the, the cross, actually around her neck I don't know you can't really see it uh, it, it this particular scene is probably shot a little dark there was actually a close-up believe it or not and um, because we were shooting 35 millimeter uh, film sometimes things can get accidentally lost you know um, and uh, unfortunately the there was a close-up and a few other shots in this scene for some reason that just completely disappeared at the lab and uh, of course we just didn't have the time or the money to go back and shoot it but um one of those shots I remember was that cross that she was, Miss Wu was reaching in and grabbing. Um, it happens though when you shoot on film. Sometimes you know you, 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 you uh, could have got, it just I don't know, just got lost. I guess that was one of the challenges actually on this movie was uh, was shooting on 35 millimeter. Um, I'm a huge film fan, um, and I I would choose shoot on film every single movie if I could. Um, but for those of you who don't know, shooting on film is very, a very expensive um, uh, method. Um, this particular movie was shot on Fuji film. It was um, just before, you know, I mean, Fuji film now has gone out of business. There's only one, only Kodak is the only, Kodak is really the only motion, is the only motion picture company um, that still makes motion picture film. But 
at the time, you know, uh, we, we particularly, uh, we wanted to shoot on Fuji film for this movie and we, we shot on all brand new Fuji film stock, um, 250D, 50, you know, 50D, um, 400 to tungsten, I think, T, 400T inside. Um, and, you know, it gave it, 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 it gave it a nice, it gave it a nice contrast and everything, you know, so, um, but we shot on 35 and we transferred everything to, um, to HD from the original negative and it was pretty much, fin the DI and everything was pretty much finished from that point, um, digitally, yeah. you know. And this this scene, oh that I remember that um, that's a bagua mirror. It's a it's actually a real sort of thing that sort of is supposed to deflect. But what she talks about in the scene, but it's supposed to deflect negative energy and evil spirits and whatnot. Um, and the 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 little fountain behind her was actually quite quite a pain to uh, to get to. Um, from to stop freezing um it, it probably doesn't look like it in this material but that location was incredibly cold um i mean every morning we would have to unfreeze that water and there's you know ice and, and uh, <laughs> you know uh, snowflakes every now and then but um, i think we did a pretty pretty good job of uh, trying to trick the audience into thinking that it's a different uh, time of year than it really is but uh, the 10th day which you'll see a little later I'll, I'll show you uh, we actually had a blizzard and it covered the entire property in four feet of snow luckily we were done shooting most of the movie but we really really missed it uh, just by a day really and then we ended up shooting the rest of it inside when, when there was five feet of snow outside so just never know. Sorry. It's okay. yeah. That's a that's a, a shot from Boston. Um, it's a it's we didn't shoot that shot. It's actually stock, but um, the idea is that you know this boyfriend is kind of cross country and he's going to end up coming out and and uh, coming after her. This scene we really had to throw together quickly. I, I don't remember the particular circumstances, but um, I think we were really pressed for time and I had to shoot this very quickly. So um, it was originally going to be somewhere else or we were going to build a, a bedroom set, but instead we ended up taking uh, um, Alyssa's mattress upstairs and we went downstairs and found a corner and sort of made a, a hey, makeshift um, a dorm room, <laughs> you know, dorm room looking set you know this guy's is kind of a kind of really kind of a pig you know, with all this stuff laying around and uh, we just had to have to throw together a quick little set to do it that phone is incredibly dated especially now but uh actually it was my personal cell phone at the time it was uh, it was a really old one that i had and we needed something for the film so we ended up using uh, the old flu phone <laughs> looks like a phone commercial actually if you look at it it's a so nicely in focus you know we're so focused on it it's another stock shot you know that was uh this is all you know real uh money that they used during the ghost month you know um, yeah, we we went out to a uh i think a local local uh, chinese place uh chinese market here and and uh bought all the incense and the, the, the money and the, the different paper that they burn to appease the spirits. Um, so that's where we, we got all this stuff. Alisa, come, come. It was so cold this night, I remember. It was freezing out there. If you could just, if I could just take the camera and sort of turn it back the other way and you could look at the crew. We are all wearing like you know, the snow, uh, snow ski suits. Practically, it was so cold. Uh, they, they, when they're doing this scene, they kept pretty warm because of the fire, so it was okay. But man, the crew was just dying. Of, 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 <laughs> so cold, everybody's feet were frozen together. I remember. Every year, you know, in the Chinese calendar, the seventh month, 
the, the fire, it, it was really windy that night too, and the, the fire actually kept blowing off, and we were shooting in the desert, so there's a lot of dry, you know, uh, leaves and trees and, so, and, and things that can catch fire really easy, and I remember one time the, um, the wind blew a little too hard and blew some of the, some of the ash and uh, kind of caught the garden on fire, <laughs> so, you know, we have, you just have to be, you know, anytime you work with fire, you have to be a little careful. You're supposed to have a, a fire person on the set, but um, we, we were just doing this little pit scene, and we didn't, but um, something as simple as the wind blowing could catch, catch something on fire, so be careful. This scene actually was cut considerably down. It's probably still too long. Uh, it's just um, the story she told went on and on for like ever. This is actually probably a quarter of what the original story that she was telling was. It was just um, <clears throat> it was just a lot of information that we had to uh, um, we had to get across and uh, I ended up just chopping it down for the final. I always like that. She tells that creepy story and then she's like did I scare you? <laughs> it's like, no, not at all. I got to sleep here tonight. You know, Mike, Mike King, uh, my DP, you know, he did all this b sort of blue lighting for us. Um, I mean, Mike and I worked together, I think, twice. We worked together on a movie I did a long time ago called Crips. It was a urban horror vampire schlocky horror comedy. Uh, we did that together in L.A., and then um, this movie came around, and uh, Mike had shot, uh, for those of you horror fans out there that know the movie, um, the Charles Manson movie, uh, Manson, uh, I think it was called, it's Manson Family, I think. Um, he shot that for Jim Van Beber, I believe, and uh, Mike has shot a lot, he shot a lot of film, so I, I thought he might be, and he's really great with the lower budget and stuff, so that's why I ended up. I ended up flying him out from Ohio because he lives in Ohio and uh, flew him out to uh, Nevada and uh, he shot this film for me. And uh, this house was so big and it had so many rooms in it that some uh, part, part of the way um, I wanted to save some money was to uh, just have some of the crew sleep on the set. Now, of course, this is something you would never do on a big budget movie or <laughs> anything like that because but because this was sort of a, a an indie film made with love and made with you know friends and and uh and people who are used to the low budget way of doing things um I had Mike King our director of photography staying at the house I stayed at the house my wife stayed at the house my dog stayed at the house the uh, our gaffer stayed at the house. I think one of the actors no! slept there a few nights downstairs because there was another room downstairs. Um, it was actually, it was really kind of efficient because, you know, it, you know, you shoot a 12, 14 hour day. You know, this location's half hour, 45 minutes from the nearest hotel where most of the actors were staying. But for us, as uh, for me as the director and for Mike as the director of photography, we, we were able to sort of, you know, talk about shots, you know. Uh, everybody went home. We could talk about shots. We woke up in the morning, ate a little breakfast. We were walking around the set talking about shots. People started, people would arrive, and then all of a sudden we were, we, were, we were back to shooting. So, in a way, living on the set is actually quite efficient, <laughs> even though it's not the norm, uh, for sure. This scene I actually cut down a lot, too. Um, frankly, what happened was this character here one of the characters later, their makeup was was really bad. It was it just, we didn't do enough makeup tests initially until, and then when I got to the set and saw it, you know, with all the lighting and the camera rolling, I felt it, that, that he looked, you know, he pretty much looked like one of the Adams Family guys. Um, and I just ended up cutting any close up to his face out of the entire film. Um, so that's you know kind of what we ended up with, and at the end was uh, I did shoot a lot more coverage of his face and, and everything, but it just was really embarrassingly bad. So um, I ended up just keeping him in shadow and keeping the, the scenes dark. And um, in 
we did some what's called digital makeup, which is taking the the face of that particular character and altering it digitally, giving him sort of a uh, a more scare a scarier face, um, which I did in this film for him. We call him the crawling ghost, and then I did it for this um, the the other character with the long hair. We call her the hair ghost, but I um I gave her also a digital makeover as well because her makeup had the same problem. Um, it's just a little trick sometimes we, we use in the and I used it actually on a film I just did uh, well I, I, did a, I did a few years ago now it's called Real Evil uh, that Full Moon put out and um, that film we did a considerable amount of digital makeup effects uh, to sort of enhance the ghosts and keep them you know keep them scary you know this is um, <coughs> excuse me this is Rick Urban uh, Rick and I go back a long way. Um, Rick was, I discovered Rick on a film I did called Crips. Yep. That was his first one. And then Rick was also in a movie I did called, uh, Dark Walker. And then he was in this one. Um, so yeah, he did, he's done a few films with me. And uh, I think that oh, he actually he was in another film I did called Deathbed. Stuart Gordon presents Deathbed. Uh, he he played the orderly at the end. So Rick and I have a little bit of a history, and uh, I don't know. There, I kind of wrote this part for him. Uh, yeah, so uh, and he was happy about that. Alyssa, nice to meet you, Alyssa. This is probably about ten hours before the blizzard came in. Uh, what you can't see there in the back is the skies are very dark, um, and it just it just got colder and colder and colder the sky got darker and darker and darker <laughs> we were losing light like crazy and um and i am and by the end of this day it, we we had five feet of snow on the ground and it was totally we could not shoot outside anymore but luckily we, i was able to get the very last shot while it was snowing um and and finish our all of our outdoor material come back anytime you'd like I'm, I'm glad that happened too because man if if we would have been halfway into shooting you know with uh, with money wise and schedule wise and you know having five feet of snow on the ground it would have it would have completely ruined the, the movie we would have we would have to shut down production there would have been any other choice until it until um the snow cleared you just never know when you do the indie indie films and well even you know big big films too you know you just never know. Uh, you can't. You can anticipate a little bit with what Mother Nature's going to do, but you just never know when you're going to get rained on, or a cloud's going to come over and take all your light, or or a blizzard comes in and ruins your whole plans for the entire movie. I think we bought that at Ross. <laughs> Actually, I gave it to. I think I gave it to Marina after this uh, the movie wrapped. I think I said, "Hey, you want this box?" And she's like, "Yeah, it's so nice." I think a lot of the props I ended up giving to some of the actors. It's, and it's just stuff we had to go out on our own and and sort of get, you know, we, we really had a, a, an incredibly small crew on this movie. Um, I mean, li- I, probably eight to ten people at any time actually on the crew. Um, it, was, it, was, it was very small. It was actually one of the smallest crews I think I've ever had to work with i mean we were we were efficient and you know and and what we did but um you know shooting film takes a little more time with lighting and blocking and um you know uh, you know you only have a certain amount of film to shoot too i I actually shot way more film than i thought i was going to shoot on this movie i originally had i think i had estimated and budgeted about thirty-five thousand feet of film and i ended up shooting about seventy-five thousand feet of film so, uh, for you filmmakers out there, you know that's a that's a considerable uh, difference. I mean, if we were shooting on a, a camera like the Red or the Alexa or, or uh, you know, any of the newer you know Black Magic's cameras or, or whatnot, uh, you know, sh- shooting over is no big deal at all. But uh, when you're rolling 35 millimeter through a camera, 16 millimeter through a camera, it is it is just eating money. As you hear that, <laughs> as you hear it turning in there, it's just eating through rolls and rolls of money because it's not just the cost of the film it's the, the it's the it's the development of the film it's the transfer of the film 
Um, hey, you know, it's uh, it's an expensive hey, medium to work in. But it's a beautiful medium. I mean, it's not something that um, I regret using. In fact, I, 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 as I said before, I am a huge film fan. Um, and if I could shoot on film, if money wasn't an issue, if I could shoot on film every movie, I would, because it really is a magical medium. You know, it really is. But I'm also a fan of other cameras, too. You know, uh, Red and okay? Lexa and whatnot, and they, they have their own properties as well. But film, you can see, like, in the actors, you can see their skin tones and how soft they are and, and the color, you know, the, the, the contrast and the grain that's in, in that particular, those particular stock of Fujifilm that we were using. is just, uh, it's just really wonderful. It just gives every, it gives the, the actors such a, a glow, you know. It's real quiet and peaceful out here. So that's my, uh, my pitch for film. <laughs> This, I should probably tell you who this is. Uh, this is uh, Kristen. And she, uh, oh boy, she, uh, I think she auditioned originally for Marie, uh, the lead, for Alyssa. And uh, she, she did a great job. I just, I just felt that maybe she would have been, a better part for her would have been the, uh, the part of the, the friend. So um, we ended up casting her for that. Yeah. And, uh, She's actually downstairs in, in the apartment. There, there was an apartment downstairs in this house, so I ended up shooting her friend's apartment downstairs in the apartment. The movie's in, like I said, the movie's incredibly contained. If you look in the back there, you can see the barns and whatnot, which you could probably see a little later in the movie uh, that, that it's the same barn. But, um, you know, we just we had to make use of our space and our setting as much as possible. So I think we had, like, two or three... Two or three or four different locations, in like all in this one place. I mean, earlier there's at the agency. The the um, I think her character name was Tessa. Um, that also was was downstairs in the same area. I still have that record player back there. That it's a actually it's a CD and record player. I think I bought it for the film, and then I I was like, hey, this is pretty cool, and I ended up putting it in my library. I still have it, too. We bought all those Chinese dresses and everything. I think we bought them at the local. We went down to a, a, a flea market. I think there was this Chinese store, and they had all these uh, all these outfits, and we just went down and bought, like, 15 of them or something like that. I think that picture was... Act that Polaroid was actually her costume-fitting picture. <laughs> we just... We just had her put it on and test it, and then we took a quick Polaroid for the movie for her to find in the box. Uh, the girl who plays Mei Ling is, um, I think her name was Anna Lee, and she um, she was a local a local uh, Vegas hire, and uh, I think this was her first film. And we just uh, said, "Hey, you want to put you know want to be a monster?" And <laughs> she's like, "Yeah." This is uh, Hello? the secret room Hello? with all the secrets. I think I digitally enhanced the shot. I don't remember why the why I, particularly I, I enhanced it, other than to just add a little bit of effect. I, I really wanted to do a lot with the walls, but you know we 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 didn't really have a lot of money to do anything visually with uh, on set, like right here, see that the walls crack. Those were all added in post. Uh, mainly just, be, just because I wanted to see, you know, I wanted to see the house lit, like be, kind of be alive a little bit, you know, be have a little bit of a, almost like the house has is possessed yeah, a little bit. I so the occasionally I, I would, you know, use that little, that little trick and crack the walls. Is there anything else? No, I think that's it. Why don't you go relax? Get the hot bath. I don't know what happened to that little dragon in the middle. We bought that. I think we bought that at a, a local flea market as well. A little foreshadowing here. <laughs> the idea was that you found this in my room. that's what she's going to beat the hell out of her with later. But uh, I'm just trying to set it this up for now. I haven't heard in a while. Did she used to live here? Yeah. 
the, at, at this point, if you could look outside, you would see five feet. You would see five feet of snow, no doubt. She's pretty. We yeah. were, we were snowed in. <laughs> I think we shot. We we definitely shot December. I think it was December fourth was our first day, and then we shot for ten days, and then we. Um, I think we might have done. We might have stayed an extra day or so for some inserts and whatnot, and then we were. And then by the time we wrapped up and got everything back, it was it was uh, it was Christmas time, man. Everybody was gone. Everybody wanted to go home. I still, you know, looking at this movie now, I still, I still can't believe how much of this, how much of this house we had to dress. I mean. If you could just imagine that it was completely empty. I mean, all those dressers and beds and sheets and pictures and everything. Every little thing we brought in. It was a, it was a great little deal that I made with this local a local company, you know. Um, you know, it was a, a great little... They had, the, they had the truck and they had the stuff and it was like, hey, you know. I think I only paid you know, like $500 or something like that for them to bring out all that furniture in that house. That was a really good deal <laughs> for a lo for an indie filmmaker. That was a really good deal. It's one of my favorite shots. In the movie right there. When you see her face and you can see her, her that was a, that original shot was her just in sort of flat makeup, you know, and it just looked like kind of a girl standing there with you know, Halloween makeup on. So I ended up in, digitally enhancing that particular shot and gave her a skull, sort of a skull face. And then just a moment ago, you saw her head come into frame and then her skin sort of like, you know, rot away, you know, and those were all digitally enhanced. Because if you could see the original, you would see why I, <laughs> why I enhanced it. Just, I just made it a lot better all around. And you broke that too. I, we ended up, I mean, that shot, we just dropped it on the ground and just filled the jug up with water, dropped it, and rolled the camera and let it <laughs> just... Broke it and swept up the glass. Yeah. That was fun. I had a lot of fun making this film. A lot of fun. This is, um, um, the, this is Jared Eddington. And, uh, Jared, um, I'm not, I don't know what else other films that he had done before this, but, um, he, yeah, he came in the audition and, uh, we, I think he, he gelled really well with us and, uh, and, and fit the sort of psycho boyfriend uh, profile really well. And uh, we ended up getting him in here. This, uh, this scene actually is um, in, in the driveway, just outside. Uh, and what I did was um, to, to make a... I, I, I wanted to... It's of course not really raining. We we ended up rigging something. I uh, I think this is actually Rick's car, <laughs> Rick who plays Blake in the movie. I said, "Hey Rick, can I use your car?" And he's like, "Yeah, sure." So he pulls it up. We put Jared in the car. I um. They said, "Well, how are we going to make it rain?" I said, "Okay, we have a garden hose. We put up uh, two C stands on both side and a and a two by four to sort of hang over top of the windshield. And then I had him punch holes." into the uh into the garden hose at about you know uh you know two or three inch intervals and i hung one over the top and i hung one over the back and we turned on the water and we have rain <laughs> that's it it's a rain bar that's essentially what it is but it's kind of a homemade low budget version of a, of a rain bar you just uh, we, we, we just end up making ourselves and and uh, it was night out, so we we had the protection of the the darkness, and then I had uh, had some moonlight, had Mike King sort of shine some moonlight in there to enhance the uh, the rain effect on the windshield. And uh, it was a, a, a pretty effective low budget trick to uh, to doing rain in a car with no rain. <laughs> and then this shot, we just moved the rain bar to the other side of the car, so it looks like it's pouring on the other side as well worked really well yeah he's definitely a psycho the scene <laughs> the scene gets a gets a, gets a chuckle I don't, I don't I mean you know 
could it have? I, I think it's just because of what he says. You know, he's talking about his mother, and then he's like throwing the phone around, and then he calls her back. I don't know what if people are, are what people are supposed to make of uh, of this guy and his intentions. <laughs> I think he was throwing his own phone around too. I don't think that was a prop. I'm sorry I said those things. Probably one. I don't remember if it was this movie or another movie, but somebody broke their phone one time when they were doing that. They they were using their own phone and they ended up getting doing a scene where they had to sort of throw it around and ended up cracking the screen. I think we had to buy them a new one. I'll be there. Just call me back. A lot of the, I mean, like on this film, you know, a lot of a lot of things were sort of begged and borrowed. You know, I mean, the um. The wardrobe, for instance, you know, um, is almost entirely owned, with the exception of some of the Asian outfits, uh, was just wardrobe that the actors owned. And uh, since it occurs over a couple days, we, we, we tried to save some money by having the actors just sort of show up in clothes that they already own, you know, and, uh, and it worked out. It worked out for us. Everybody has to kind of... With these movies, you know, everybody has to kind of help out if you can, you know. I mean, if, if you're comfortable with it or and if you have a, it's like, hey, I got an old sweater or, hey, I got an old pair of pants I could wear, you know, that sort of thing. I mean, of course, if, if it was a scene that involved blood or dirt or, or anything where, where it would destroy the clothes, we, of course, would either, one, purchase the clothes from the actor or we would just go out and buy our own, you know, clothes. But for a scene like, you know, like this where people are just walking around and, you know, or just... Uh, some scenes with dialogue and whatnot. Uh, it just, for us at the time, it just made more sense to to have the actors wear their own own clothes when they could, because I mean, because it's really a, a vast majority of the money for this movie went into the went into the film and the processing. It really did. It was a it was a, a, a an incredibly expensive part of this movie. I think we rented that table as well. From a different place, actually. I think it was Rena Center or something like that. We needed a, a few other items, and we went down to like a, one of those furniture rental stores, a different one, and we we ended up uh, making a similar similar deal. This was a this was like a. A, a storage shed, I believe, or it was a just a storage shed, and um, that, of course, there's no door, there's no actual hole there. This is this is a whole different set we had we built in the garage, um, but we the, the idea was like this this crawling guy lives in this sort of outhouse, if you will, or dog house, or or a, a family secret house where where the family hides their they're bastard children, um, and um, so the idea was that he, you know, he sort of lived out there, and we, we, you know, we just found this. It was just a storage shed, and we kind of turned it into a little playhouse, really. Yeah, this is another shot. Um, you can see him crawling behind her. She's too scared to turn. The actor that plays the crawling ghost is na his name is Tam Albertson, and he is uh, he is um, he's in a wheelchair uh, in, real, in real life, and uh, he's a he's an incredible athlete. Um, he's a he, uh, oh man, uh, I wish I could remember all the things he could do, but I remember he was a very talented athlete and. He drove a really cool car, I remember, and uh, he was a pleasure to work with. I mean, for a guy that I had c literally crawling on the ground all the time on dirt and rocks, and uh, we sh we actually shaved his head. He actually had a full head of hair, and um, one of the conditions was uh, I, I said, hey, Tam, uh, we need to shave your head. Are you okay with that? And I mean, I don't mean like military shave. I mean like completely bald <laughs> shave. It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so we ended up shaving his entire head during, uh, I think it was like the first day of shooting or something. We ended up saying, take him in the other room and just giving him a complete shave. And he had to be, he had, he was in contacts. I mean, you can't really see him in the film because I ended up having to cut a lot of his material back. But 
Um, he had these incredibly uncomfortable contacts he had to wear in his eyes that gave him black eyes. They were almost like sawtooth looking things. Um, uh, and he was, a, he was a real sport about it. He was a real sport. This is our built set downstairs in the garage. We had, we had a fake wall that we had built so we could get all the light behind it and have it shine through the bricks. That, that's one of my favorite shots in the film right there, that one. She's just like, get this off. Comes down on her. That was a digitally enhanced shot as well. We just, uh, d- uh, a friend of mine uh, does a lot of the digital effects works, also a director. Um, he did uh, a lot of the Killjoy movies that you, if you're a fan of uh, horror and full moon pictures and and Killer Clowns, uh, a, f- a guy named John Lachago, and he did a lot of these uh, visual effects for me in this movie. He's very talented at that. Those were all enhanced, too. Yeah. Are you okay? I can't take this anymore. I think a, one of the big questions in this movie is, why doesn't she just run away? Why does she stay in this in this house? <laughs> well, it's a movie. <laughs> Where's she gonna go? She's in the middle of the desert, and her boyfriend's after her, right? She has nowhere else to go. I mean, at least that was the idea. But I know if I was her, I would have probably, I definitely would have just took my bat and took my shit and just, you know, bailed. Especially with the creepy aunt, you know, creeping around the house all the time. If you all find a ghost. You have These act, the actors had a had a blast though making the movie. I mean, um, I I I can't remember everyone's resume off the top of my head, but um, I, I I think this was from I, I probably most of their first first major you know featured roles for most of the actors, um, and I think for them that was that was something that was really really cool for them and everything she talks about here is all based on fact I mean this is really what they do in the Chinese ghost month you know the, the, it's, the these rules are all real rules the the um, the ash the money burning I mean uh, everything that you see in this film that they're doing or that they're talking about is 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 the way it is how it happens the only what i was trying to do with, with the story was uh i mean i'm a fan of asian horror movies but what i what i was trying to do was to bring like sort of an asian horror movie mentality or an asian horror movie vibe to america and keep it keep the asian elements but put it in in a american environment in this case it would be the desert in the southwest, you know, where this Asian lady lives, and she, but still maintains her beliefs, you know, that I had the entire cast sign that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know what happened to it, but it was, uh, it was, yeah, I had everybody sign that, and I, I don't know what happened to it, though. Sometimes you, as a director, you want to keep something, you know, on the set, like a, a prop or something and you put it in your office and it and it has that sort of memory every time you see it like oh that's that that's the helmet from so and so and that's the mask from this movie and that's the door hanging from ghost you know or that's the ghost from that movie you know Hi. so it's what are you doing here well, this is for you since you like to read they're all. losing light out there as you can probably tell <laughs> the biology of horses by dr blake hazy this was a great house. I mean, it was a, it was. Signed it for you right there. I wouldn't say it's not a log cabin, but it's just Thanks. everything in it was made of of wood, obviously. But it it, it um, it was a really really cool little this is house. A nice place. It was um, uh, it took a lot to heat it though. I remember. It was a. Uh, I'm not supposed to have anyone. You know, six thousand square feet. You know, it was a lot of area to. To put to turn the heater on, and believe me, we turned the heater on when we weren't shooting because it was cold. Haven't you ever broken one? <laughs> I don't. Well, I don't. I don't I know like why he says it that way, stupid. but it's so so like <laughs> bizarre the way he says that. <laughs> don't worry, I 
I seen her drive past my house a few minutes ago with the old lady. Would you like something to drink? Sure. What do you have? Let's see. Uh, as you, we, um, Martini. the fridge Let's was completely start. empty, of course, when we, when we sort of moved into the house, but the people who were staying in the house, myself included, we had our daily food in there. <laughs> So you can see, like, you can see how unhealthy the uh, the fridge was. You know, it's just like water and mustard and mayo and ketchup and pickles and uh, you know, and ham and cheese and you know, and uh, uh, probably some ice cream in the freezer and that's about it. Are you married? Because we were we were u- we were using this kitchen every morning when we woke up. In fact, I think my script is actually laying on the. Oh no, they that's the book he gave her. <laughs> Never mind. There is a seat in here. I won't tell you where it is, but there there's somewhere a seat in here where I actually you could see my script on the back table somewhere. It happens sometimes, you know. You, you just forget you put it there and you're moving so quickly and you forgot that it was in the scene. Actually, there's a there I'll point it out to you a little later, but there's a there's a there's a hand that's clearly in the scene later. And it's not a ghost hand. It's a grip hand. Took a while to get used to the isolation, but it had a beautiful view, though, this house. Um, this is the back patio area, and, you know, you're, the, 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 um, the area up there was, uh, there's some old, I think there's some, old, like, an old Indian burial ground, or and I think there's, like, a hot springs very close by. Um, we were only about, I think it's, like, 30 minutes away from Pahrump, Nevada, Trump, Nevada, for those of you who don't know, is the only one, if not the uh, one of the um, places in the United States where prostitution is actually legal. And there's a lot of brothels over there. So, um, you know, every everybody that go, goes from Vegas to Pahrump to visit the brothels has to sort of pass through, um, you know, this, this general area where all these houses are and whatnot. And... Uh, so yeah you get some characters there's some characters around there what are you doing here I don't coming to get to know you remember let's see this was need any friends especially ones like you I remember we did this take like about 20 times I don't remember why though I think it's a camera problem or something somebody get you know I was thinking that maybe open up their line or something all right. Now you can see the set we build a little bit, a little bit better. We just had to keep it. You know, I tried to keep it as dark as like we could in there because you know the. You know, like I said, it is a garage. Um, you know, and we. But it, but it was great though. I mean, it really was big. I mean, six car garage. You know, with all this extra storage area really gave us a lot of room to work with and to build several sets down there. <clears throat> now this, where the key just fell down, that, the, 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 I think the owner um, was a, I think he was really into race cars or uh, into um, you know, restoring old race cars and trucks and whatnot. But that area down there was a, one of those pit I don't, I don't know what it's called I think it's like a, just a, it's just a sort of a you know you roll the car over on top of it and then you're able to get underneath it to do all the sort of maintenance and whatnot to the car and when I saw that I was like hey cool that could work as our pit because we needed a pit where this where this you know crawling ghost <laughs> TW as he's, his name is in the movie uh, where he sort of was thrown and locked in and, and uh, so we ended up just this is it right here we ended up just sort of making it work for the movie. I actually wrote a considerable amount of the movie around what was available. I think you'll find as a independent filmmaker that if you find a great location that you know you have access to, one of the best things you can do to save money is to write your story around whatever you have available. So if you have a an amazing car or if you have you have a, a cornfield that you're like you're 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 it's been in your family for generations and it's got a barn on it well that's perfect there you go now write a story around that um it's really a a really a great way to um really a great way to work if you if you want to do a list of independent films yes ma'am come over here 
was all that that wine was all like super <laughs> super cheap wine. I think we went down to the store and it was like two dollars a bottle. I had him drink it too. Do you like wine? Good. Yeah, it's like sure? gallo yeah. garbage wine. <laughs> That's the occasion. I still have that that there's a a Buddha head there in the back. I actually still have that in my living room. Actually, the other Buddha, there's another Buddha in there. Those are all uh, ones that I own. I ended up bringing to the set, but I still have those. Oh. I'm sorry I was short with you earlier. So weird, I can look back at some of the films that I've made and see bits and pieces of, of, of my living room or of my office or studio, stuff that I've loaned out over the years to sort of fill in sets, you know. You told me you didn't know her. I guess there's a piece of me in every one of them, right? What happened? Are you sure you This film um I'm sure. Yeah, we uh, we shot She was a good girl. We didn't have to come back and reshoot anything. I mean, uh, you know, we we used some stock material, some stock footage, but other than that, you know, you know, we, we were able to really contain it into the amount of days we did it, so we we spent a whole entire month dressing the place could be because as I said earlier, I had I had the house for the entire month of November and the entire month of December. So for the entire month of November, we just went up there every day and just, you know, dressed it and built the sets and really took our time, you know, putting those together. And that really worked out well for us. For sure. This movie was cut in, uh, for those of you that may be interested in some of the technical information, uh, the movie was actually edited in uh, um, Final Cut. So Final Cut Pro, and uh, I think we did the color work, the, the, the DI in color, which it doesn't exist anymore. And, uh, you know, I did all the mastering work myself and whatnot. And, uh, yeah. Blake stopped coming around. I don't. I don't know what happened to the negative. Honestly, <laughs> I had. I actually had all the negative transferred. Um, to HD, I had everything transferred over, all of it. One day. That way, I wouldn't have to go back to it. Because that would be you know, always expensive to do that anyway. But it would be even more expensive to have to go back to it later. My dear Miss Wu, my life has become empty. I can't bear the loneliness. Oh, I think that's my wife's handwriting, sorry, actually, uh, Jojo. Jojo did the, um, Jojo Draven is the composer and one of the producers on the movie. And and she's also my wife. And uh, she did the music score for the movie, which I was, which is uh, uh, really unique. You know, it has all these, all these Asian, Asian instrumentation. And, um, and it just really added a lot to the, to the movie. And if you're interested... You know, you can listen to the um, isolated um, on this edition of, of, of the offerings. You can listen to the uh, isolated music score, which is really cool. I remember this was it was freezing <laughs> this night, and we were having a lot of problems with that smoke machine. But it actually turned out we finally were able to get it doing what it was supposed to do but he actually came I cut it in the film but he actually came all the way down that that little that little uh that little stretch of um path there and he came all the way to the camera and then he like reached at the camera but like as I said before the makeup didn't work so I ended up cutting it to where he just sort of came around the corner and uh we ended up cutting out of it I just give I just gave that away actually I still had that that little clock I hadn't used it since the film so I ended up I think I donated it I think that's the same robe that Shirley wore earlier. 
just the little movie, the little movie things that you remember as a director. You're just like, oh hey, boy. You're not white. Jesus. What's wrong? I don't know what's wrong with me lately. I think I'm going crazy. I had all the actors um, stay. They were stay. They stayed at a hotel about thirty surreal. minutes away. So you couldn't we. Tell. You know, we had to, we shuttled everybody in every day, you know, we shuttled them in, you know, they did their work, we shuttled them back, you know, it was, uh, it it was, uh, they had fun together at the, at the hotel that they stayed at. I remember they were all hanging out and partying and, you you know, having a good old time. You got to remember it is Las Vegas. So the hotel they're staying at, you know, has there's, you know, slots and blackjack and anything you can think of. Um, wait. But you know who who, who would who who would not want to come to Vegas to, to make a, to make a movie? You know, it's, it's a lot of fun because at the end of the day, after your shoot, you know, you uh, you can go have a, you can go have a little fun. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've shot. This is the first film I shot in in, uh, in Nevada. All the other movies I made, I think one movie I made was shot in Fresno, but other than that, it was they were mostly made in Los Angeles. Usually in like super bad areas too. I mean, the movie I made uh, uh, called Real Evil, we shot at the Linda Vista Hospital, um, which is one of the most haunted uh, haunted places in uh, in all of Los Angeles. And uh, man, that was a creepy sure shoot. Okay. Uh, that's a whole another whole another movie you're gonna have to go find and watch if you wanna know what I'm talking about. But uh, that was definitely a creepy one. Okay. This place was not haunted, but the. The asylum that I shot in the old hospital certainly was. Yeah. If you blink, you probably missed it, but there, there he was again behind the chair, and I sort of gave him a little bit of a ghostly, um, transparent look. Now this, this was the, uh, the apartment downstairs at the house. Um, I think the owner would rent this out to, you know, people who were looking for a one sort of a one bedroom apartment. Actually, I think it was a two bedroom apartment. Um, and we ended up really using it as a green room the entire shoot. Um, we moved, obviously we shot this scene and there's an, an agency scene we shot and I think another scene we shot earlier. But really this is where we kept the actors the entire time. This is where the craft service was at. This is where people ate their lunch at. This is where people hung out at. The, the, um, there were two bedrooms in the back one bedroom we used as the makeup room and i think the other bedroom makeup and wardrobe room and then the other bedroom we used as like kind of a nappy room i guess for people who got tired to go in there and take a nap um and uh you know the fridge and every everything in here was just total craft services so it's really cool i mean it, it it worked really well for us because essentially it's just like you know, having everybody over at your house, and and then if you go out that door on the right, you would enter the six-car garage, and then just uh, if you go out into the right and then up the stairs, you're at your you would see the rest of Miss Miss Wu's house, and of course outside, uh, which you'll see a little bit later. You know. Tell me, don't make me do this. Tell me. Yeah, people have told me like, ah, oh, she wouldn't have died that fast. You know? You probably should have choked her for longer, but see her eyes kind of turned red. They kind of turned red and got a little watery, and they kind of got a little bloodshot. Those were actually all well, that was digitally enhanced as well. Actually, I think I did that. I think we had to um, I had to do that to sort of. I, don't know, I just I was just trying to sell the fact that she died so quickly, and so we ended up trying to trying to get her eyes a little bit more popped. <laughs> you know, that's the end of her. And that was, I think that was Miss Wu's robe again. <laughs> that was like the third time in the movie. Same handwriting. <laughs> this is the same handwriting as Miss Wu is supposed to have. <laughs> Which you'll see later. If you, I'm sure if you're listening to this commentary, I'm assuming you've already watched the movie. So when she says, you know, um, Miss Wu, she compares the handwriting. Well, the handwriting on the fridge is, if you look at it closely, it's clearly the same handwriting. Yeah. 
Now, this diary had an interesting story. Uh, it, it's written in um, all these Chinese characters, and uh, Shirley actually wrote all this stuff. Apparently, um, I could never translate it for you, but from what she was telling me, she was essentially writing... I think she said she was writing love letters to her her, um, her boyfriend, or her... I can't remember if it was a boyfriend or her husband at the time. <laughs> I don't remember, gosh. Um, but essentially, she was she was writing to her significant other, uh, you know, like love letters, and uh, and uh, that's kind of what hey, that was all about. You know, now if you freeze frame it and you had it translated, who knows what it says? I have no idea. It would be interesting to find out. Though. <clears throat> Poor Marina in this scene, she got. You can see it on the. Uh, you can see it on the blooper reel. She got a little frustrated during one of the takes. It's really funny, but it, it, you can you can just tell by her face and his face how cold it is. If you look at her nose, it's just like it is so cold out. This was this was the um, on the also on the property, and it was just it was just you know horse stables that that um, the owner had out there, and I ended up sort of writing it into the into the movie. That, you know, Blake's property was, you know, Blake had all these horses what and whatnot. And, uh, just stay away from um, yeah, we just Alyssa, walked wait. outside and down the hill, and there we are. We're shooting. This is a stock shot. of This is supposed to be the agency. Yes. Well, and clearly, that's in New England somewhere. And now we're back at our house okay. again. This is also the house. This is downstairs at the house. What you can't see is there was... Uh, there was when he opened the door there were some snowflakes <laughs> that were actually coming in Hello. it's very subtle but it was it was uh, the blizzard was was coming so but we were starting to get very light snowflakes and uh every time he opened that door it was like it was like somebody was blowing you know uh, blowing snow <laughs> into the into into the the room but yeah we just had to we had to cheat a lot of this stuff you know to to make it work for our for our situation, you know, in the film. So, yeah, we, this office that she's in was, I think, was the makeup room that we ended up redressing to uh, to look like it was, so, like, you know, an, an office at a, in a building somewhere. And the waiting room, we just sort of put together. That, um, it was actually originally supposed to be shot at a, at a realtor's office. Uh, we had scouted out a local realtor's office to shoot this entire scene. Um, and I ended up saying, you know, budget wise and schedule wise and having to move the, the, the entire production from way up in the mountains to way across town for literally one scene in the movie. You know, something that took us probably you know, not even a half a day to shoot just didn't make financial sense or for the production. Um, so we ended up, I ended up you know, saying, hey, we just need to build this set at the house and save time and money. And that's, that's what we did. Hang on. This is Erica Did you say her name was? Ed, Alyssa. and she Alyssa Barnes. Uh, plays Tessa, and uh, yeah, she, uh, she's been she did a good job, and uh, I'm, not sure what she, um, I'm not sure what she's up to these days. Bit of a hike from here. I've been trying to fill that position for quite some time. Yeah. That old computer back there, geez. Here's the address. The old, old iMac look like everything in this office was actually borrowed from the executive producer's house and if you need any everything the, the, the actually the dog picture there in the back was my childhood dog <laughs> you can see it back there it's a little out of focus but that was my one of my childhood dogs named pebbles and uh actually it's funny because i i didn't even realize that was there until now i i forgot that was even in there if you look really closely at a lot of that stuff in the in the office it probably I'll, i would i would probably pick out things that i recognize but um yeah we just we needed to dress it so we went to their office and we just we, they literally just put a whole bunch of stuff in a car and just drove it up and we decorated the office with that stuff this is behind the stable um on the property um, there was like a bird cage or something over there, a lion cage. I don't know. The guy had all kinds of animals. Um, we, yeah, we just dug up, a, we dug up a hole and, you know, staged the whole scene, you know, in the back area. There's actually a freeway, 
the main road kind of really close by uh, when we were lucky. There was a lot of motorcycles running by too, but we were lucky to be able to sort of get really clean sound uh, for, for, a, for something that's fairly close to the road. This is, again, very close to that blizzard coming. In fact, I think this is probably like two or three hours before it started to pour. Before it started to just plow down on us. I'm just, I'm just so grateful that we were able to get everything shot outside <laughs> before that came down. Because, as I mentioned earlier, it would have been disastrous for us to have to shut down production, you know, on something. You know, it really would have. She's a nosy girl, I've noticed. <laughs> She's like a hey. curious cat. Just keeps going around, around sticking her nose uh, and everything. I, uh, I was... You were what? What's in there? It's... It's a dead horse. Now, if you want a different perspective Why? other than mine, there's always the... The cast... Always uh, cast commentary. Um, also on the cry? disc, which uh, is uh, Marina, Shirley, and hey, Rick. Here. And they did their own commentary track. This was a stock shot as well. Although we do get, uh, there there are incredibly amazing, there just really are some amazing moons in Nevada at night, you know. Um, but to catch it, you know, at the right time is a little difficult. I think we bought that fire pit at like Lowe's and then I had it for a while. I don't know what happened to it actually. I think I gave it away. It's amazing when you when you look at these movies, it's every little every little detail starts to come back to you, you know, in these commentaries. I'm not sure what uh, Rick's up to these days, what he's, his uh, new projects are and, and whatnot, but he, uh, I'm not sure what he's up to. I know Marina got married. <laughs> she wasn't married during the movie, but I know uh, I think she's married now. Red Rock Canyon. It's beautiful. It really is. If you've uh, ever been, if you ever come to Las Vegas and want some amazing hiking and uh, scenery, uh, go check out Red Rock Canyon for sure. That door covering down there was put there because there was a um, there was a doggy door <laughs> down there, so I had to cover it up for the scene. So we ended up making this little sort of like plaque down there to cover it up because it, it, it looked really bad. <laughs> that, was a, that was a digital enhanced shot as well. The original, you, you, you just... You really saw... It really saw like a girl in makeup, and then when I had it, when I had it digitally enhanced, it just really enhanced the the look of that creature a lot. All that brick that she's leaning against is real. We brought all that brick to that house. I mean, it it must have been at least 300 bricks, like real bricks. Uh, the the wall itself was a fake brick veneer um, with a real brick section that later you'll see it um, gets knocked out or built up. So we, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of brick work in this one. I don't know what my fascination with brick is because uh, that was, that's one of my favorite shots that when her, when her uh, skin uh, sort of rots away in fast motion. It's really, uh, uh, that's really one of my favorite digitally enhanced shots in the movie. Very cool. Yeah. 
We did a lot of brick stuff in the movie I did with Stuart Gordon. Uh, the movie did called Deathbed. There was supposed to be this brick room, and you know, behind the bricks was this bed and all this stuff, but we couldn't build the room, so it ended up being upstairs in this in this mysterious room upstairs because we couldn't afford to build a, ro a room that was behind a room, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. So I think when I did this movie, I was like, ah, oh, I want to do some bricks again. We're we're something with bricks. Yeah, that was a real chicken. It was, of course, a dead chicken already. We, we we just went to the store and bought a chicken that was already dead with its head still on it and had her, had her chop it off. I don't know why, really. Oh. Other than, other than to make people squirm a little bit in their seats That's when they see it, I think. I think some people at the test screen were like, oh, that was disgusting. Yeah. Finally, I'm never gonna eat chicken earlier. again. You were fine, but you were just lying there like you fell asleep. I remember just seeing something. Mm. Listen, mm. tonight's the last night of the girls' month. You should be happy because you know the king of hell is gonna yeah, come out and gather all the spirits and bring them back to hell. It was towards the end of the shoot, hell. I remember. I think just most people had gone home. We were, and they bless you. And you have good Most, uh, a lot of the key people, anyway. Well, I should get back to work. It's okay if you want to rest. I think I'd rather just get it done. Oh, Alisa, mm. there's a message for you. Really? So we'll get on the couch. There's the handwriting. So every day on this movie, because we were in the middle of nowhere, um, from a production standpoint, we had to, um, I, I was having film flown in from LA because you know you can't buy motion picture film or get it developed in, in Nevada. So I was running a low on film, so I would, have to, I would have to have it ordered and have it literally overnight into the set, which was of course incredibly expensive because film is heavy. And um, and then we you know we would shoot the day. Oh, this scene, this shot right there, you can see the snow coming down. That was literally the last shot when Rick looks behind the tree. That was the last shot that we shot outside during the blizzard. And then and and what you what you're not seeing is the massive uh, the massive downpour <laughs> that that happened uh, uh, within moments of that shot ending. So that and then the rest of the movie from that point forward we shot inside so <laughs> anyway uh but what i was saying about the film was yeah i mean the way it worked with this one is we would we would um at the end of the day we would uh uh the second ac would would a uh, second assistant camera would um you know tally up everything and get the get the film ready to be shipped back to la so at the end of the day that we had a runner who would come and get a box of film and they would they would go down to um to uh, fedex or and uh, drop it off the next day, and then that would be overnighted to, uh, I believe our lab was Photochem on this one. It would be overnighted to the lab in LA, and they would they would do the processing and dailies and and, uh, and everything. We did that every day. And, uh, then the dailies would get flown, would get shipped back to us, and we would look at them. And uh, but that's yeah, that's kind of how it worked on this one. She vanished. One day, we found her room empty, and this was on her bed. Some people like the instant daily. I mean, of course, if we were shooting on digital, you 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 you're, you know you, you get to see see what you're getting immediately. But on film, in this particular case, I mean, I'm I'm looking at everything through a black and white monitor, you know, and you know, and I, I oh right down there in the corner in the bottom bottom right, you can see a hand. <laughs> that is that is our grip um, holding the door back because every time she came in the room and hit the door it would it would close behind her so i had him laying down in the, in the corner so when she opened the door the hand comes in and holds the door but if you look at it if you if you're interested if you want to rewind it a little bit you you will see clearly a human hand holding the door <laughs> but uh but anyway with film you know it's it, it was it, that that's just one of the things you have to It was a lot of fun for me. 
we were shooting with some really great lenses. Too. I think they were, I think they were, um, they were um, the Zeiss um, primes that were really, really good glass that we were shooting for this film. And the movie cam camera, the camera itself, is, 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 a, uh, is the compact version of of, of the camera. And if you watch the behind the scenes, you can see the camera. It's but that's the compact version. <laughs> You know, it, it's it's still a big camera. It's heavy. It's 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 uh, the mags are, are really large. And uh, if you see this, I think it's called the movie cam Super America or something like that. It's like, it's it's like twice the size. It's like huge. You know. It was pretty quiet though. I gotta remember. Camera. This, this scene got a lot of the actors kept cracking up during the scene I don't know why it was like giggle night or something but um, they would do the scene and then they would start laughing <laughs> I think it was Aunt Chen Akiko's character because she was so deadpan serious all the time that it was it was making people laugh because she I mean, and, and, but she was just here she is right here and she was just so into her character and just so deadpan all the time and then Shirley would just crack up and Anna who plays the, the dead girl here uh, would crack up that's actually Jojo uh, my wife standing in <laughs> for Anna we for some reason she had to, I think she went out of town had to go to town or she couldn't be on set that day even though she was supposed to be there and we ended up having to put someone else in the wall and I ended up in, enlisting Jojo <laughs> To, uh, to put on the outfit and put her in some plastic and put her behind the wall. Mm. That was the, the room. The, the room she just went in is actually a bathroom, but the one behind her, that was actually the room I stayed in the entire shoot. That's where all the the dailies were we had like a little edit bay in there you know that we had uh we had all the props and we had um everything was really essentially it was kind of like the production office slash bedroom uh, for me i can't remember how many rooms this house had it had like i think it was like six bedrooms or something like that mm. And to my knowledge, this house has never been used. Uh, it, it, it has only been used for this film and not, not for any other movie ever to this day. Hopefully it stays that way. Maybe that's, that's a digitally enhanced shot in there. A digitally enhanced. I always like to shoot it in places that other people haven't shot like a million movies yet. Now this bed we had to because she goes under the bed but it's actually uh, being being held up by I think like two apple boxes in order to get her to be able to slide under it. These are Jojo's feet actually. You can tell if you look really close that the shoes don't fit her feet at all <laughs> but uh, Shirley wasn't there that day and uh, we we made him I don't know if we, we just forgot or we made a mistake but we needed somebody to to do the feet so I had my wife Jojo to put this put the shoes on and walk in <laughs> and walk out it was pretty easy but uh, but the shoes I remember when she put them on he's like these shoes are like way too big like, oh, well. digital work on her eyes there. The house had these lights, these green lights. Um, we didn't add that, actually. The, that's how the house looked at night. It had it um, had all this um, outdoor lighting already there. But it helped us, you know, for, for, the, for the movie, for sure. Um, we had an agreement. We do. But, but I, I see you've 
you're sniffing around. As a housekeeper, you're awful. You're fired. <laughs> you know I've been thinking. She she liked this line, I remember when she said it. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> I still have the um, those those um, food uh, the dogs and the, the food uh, dogs on the uh, little background there and that little pagoda over on the right. I have that in my garden. You know, I still have a lot of the stuff. It's amazing seeing it in here. I think that well, that's where I got it. I mean, we bought it for the movie, and then after the movie's over, it's like, okay, well, what do we do with it? Well, you know, we can't really, you know, we can donate it or we can keep it. So I ended up keeping some of it. That we're down in that pit again, the one I was telling you about, where um, to work on cars and stuff. Yeah. Hey! Let me out of here! What am I gonna do with you? Miss Wu, please let me out. I know this for you, Miss Wu. I like you. But if you would mind your own business, instead of snooping in mine all the time, we couldn't we we took this grate that she's walking on and and moved it over a few feet to uh, when, when earlier when uh, marina was looking down with the flashlight and looking down in the hole and all that um well that wasn't really practical for us to do so we ended up having to take the grate off of here and move it over to the dirt and sort of cheat that as the opening of the hole um, but that thing was heavy that thing was really heavy my mother is believing you're quite bad the raised child goes in early yeah, it was it was uh, we, oh yeah these <laughs> these urns we bought we just went out I think to like Ross and Marshalls or whatever we did I don't remember we went out and we bought all these like urns and aged them and broke them up and, you know put them together this movie was really um was really a do-it-yourself production i mean we really did a lot of a lot of things to save money you know between um the wardrobe and the and the, and the sets and the, i mean just we did a lot to save money on this movie it's not by chance the structure to it that's one of the reasons I use it a lot in my book. I, for those of you who might not know, I wrote a book. Um, I've written several books, actually, the, about filmmaking. And the first one I wrote was a book called The Filmmaker's Book of the Dead, How to Make Your Own uh, Heart Racing Horror Movie. And uh, I just finished uh, uh, this year, actually, I just finished the second edition, the expanded one that comes out uh, this year, 2015. And... Um, you can get it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or any major booksellers. But um, in in that book, I talk a lot about how we made because there were a lot of things that we did on this film that um, that we were able to save money. And uh, I, I get a lot of people that ask me, um, or email me and for advice or, or uh, say, "Hey, Danny, you know how how do you, you know do you know, how, how do you think I can do this? And, or how, you know what's the best camera to use?" And, um, and then I just decided to write a book about it. I always wanted to, and, uh, and that, that became The Filmmaker's Book of the Dead. So and I wrote another book, too, called Genre Filmmaking, and it's all about shots, visual shots and style and how to use different shots for different emotions and whatnot. And that's also available out there at uh, Focal Press and uh, Barnes & Noble and Amazon. You can see it. Yeah. <laughs> That key, uh, gosh, I think that key, we had to go, there was some story behind that key. I was looking for an old key, and I, I think I had to have somebody go down to an old locksmith and and find that specific key. Because that's not something you can just go down to Lowe's and find, you know. It's a very specific style of key, so. Um, yeah, I think we got that from a local locksmith. I remember 
This isn't a lock at all, of course. We just, we, I had him drill a hole through the metal and make it look like a lock. <laughs> we just, we just put, put it together. This was a fun scene to shoot, I remember. Uh, I think the girls had fun shooting this. I think one of them... I remember right, I think one of them hurt their ankle or something. Uh, I know Shirley, poor Shirley, had bruises on her. And, uh, later on, she gets tied up to the wall. And she, she kept saying, oh, you know, the ropes need to be a little tighter. And it's like, oh. And then she would, you know, she would resist. And, and you know, she would bruise. Like here, you know, they're throwing. They were really throwing. I just had them go at it. I said, "Hey, why don't you got you guys do? You know, we we didn't have a stunt person or anything on a set, so we we just had them sort of improv this this fight scene, and they just kind of went at it. You know, I said, "Hey, look, I'm gonna roll the camera. You guys fight." And they, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> so we we were she ramped the stairs. Shirley came out. They attacked each other, and uh, they just went at it. And I shot what they did pretty much. There was no real court. Uh, there was no real stunt uh, uh, stunt involvement here, you know, or stunt doubles or anything. So, but they banged themselves up a little bit because they were kind of falling the ground. They didn't have a pad down there and stuff. You know? so, they just went at it. There, just bash your head. Really gets mean in the scene. <laughs> yeah, that will do it. These long moments of black to sort of transition us into the next moment. Now that over on the right is actually real brick cut out to a certain frame because it's going to be the brick's going to sort of is going to fall out um, and then the rest of the brick of course is all is all sort of fake brick but um, yeah we really had to had to build that right and uh, yeah we really we just we tied Shirley up to that thing I remember I remember her. Her, I remember her arms and leg. I think arms and thighs getting really bruised because she was resisting it a lot. Yeah. I was told when we were ma when we were shooting this scene by, I think the boom operator, her, her father had been a a um, mason, a stone mason. It's like that's not how they break things up and I was like oh man don't tell me that right when I'm about to shoot it you know I don't know much about you know about, about you know, masonry so um she's like oh no that's not how you do it that's not how they do it and I'm like well so I I, I made this shot a lot tighter and the idea is that she's kind of at the top you know like she she built it she built the wall and like the the top layer was supposed to be you know, sort of the, the final at the, the very top of the wall. But uh, she puts the last brick in. But that was all. I mean, we we had a, a small little area built for that. But um, you know, all the you know all the all the all uh, it was all real brick and all real um you know uh, everything for that. So uh, was Jared Bob. You can see how small Marina is compared to Jared, I think, in that shot. <laughs> Marina's pretty sh pretty short. Jared's very tall. He's like he is like six four or six five, I think. That's one of the reasons we cast him because he was very tall. Yeah. He goofed up his line a few times. I think in this scene, I remember. 
I think uh, one or two of them are in the are in the uh, blooper reel on the disc. Miss Wu is going to get what she deserves. This is this whole scene was you know we uh, again with the fake wall so we had we had the fake wall built with some real bricks sort of outlining the area see this is and we had somebody back there just sort of just kicking the bricks so they would they would fall down and uh, and you know we had the light source back there and everything as well that was actually a, a that pill I think it was like a I think it was a piece of candy actually if I remember <laughs> it wasn't a pill at all I think it was a mint breath mint yeah so now you can see the sort of pattern we cut out and then we filled in the, the pattern with real brick and then we just had the if you look real closely you can see how the brick is really thin it's not supposed to be but but um yeah we had her sort of behind the wall and had somebody below her sort of kicking in the wall together that was fun that was fun to shoot that and you know we shot this movie with no generator at all actually and you know for for a movie when you shoot on, on on film, usually you need a lot of light, and uh, and I didn't want to bring in a generator. We ended up just tapping into the house power, uh, and we were able to, to run all of our lights without having to bring in a loud and expensive generator. So that was not working for us. People always comment. I think Rick, you know, Rick comments on the scene sometimes. It's kind of funny, like. Why doesn't Blake fight back? And I was like, well, he's kind of a puss, really. I mean, you know, he, he's not really a fighter, right? He's supposed to be this, like, veterinarian, the guy that lives next door, a little bit of a wimp. But uh, he totally gets his ass handed to him in this scene. I, 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 he, he does nothing to fight back. So in retrospect, looking back on the film, I, I think I should have had him probably put a punch or two in there because uh, looking at it now, you're kind of like, geez, he really didn't fight back. He just, like, just takes a beating, you know? He just... He really doesn't do anything. But in the end, you know, he gets up and he dies of an acid death or yeah. that scene got cut shorter too, but you see him there but it, I had to digitally enhance all his makeup but I didn't have him on the screen very long because it started to look really ridiculous and he, was, he was sort of grabbing at her and everything and it just it looked really weird so it's been the scene was cut really short you know that's an enhanced scene too I, I like that shot actually uh, the um throughout the film you do hear Cantonese you know I I, I couldn't say what those words are off the top of my head, but um, I remember having Shirley do a lot of the. Uh, I think Shirley actually did the Cantonese. So the ghost voices that you're hearing that are in another language, that's actually Shirley's voice, I believe. So, <laughs> and we just enhanced it a little bit to make it sound like it was someone else. Now this scene, this was supposed to be the last shot of the movie originally, and I had him crawl. You don't see it because I cut it out, but they actually crawled all the way over to Jared, on top of Jared, and then like it almost looked like they were humping him at some point, and I, I was like, oh my god! So we ended up just showing them briefly, sort of out of focus in the background, and then we, you know, we cut out. <laughs> but yeah, the, I think you can see it in the blooper reel light too. They they like totally crawl up on him and just like it looked like they were they were humping him or something. It was really weird. And now this this dialogue that she's saying right now the voiceover dialogue was all written all last like minute because actually after the movie the movie had played I, I think and um, I think it needed a little bit more explanation at the I end so the I ended up writing some extra dialogue here at the end for, for her voiceover but it, it wasn't it, it wasn't in the original script it was just we just I had to do it at the last minute but it yeah. has never been the same I will never understand the evil this is of course the same 
house, but and Let it's it funny because it's the same like stuff that she was using at Miss Lou's house, even though she's supposed to be <laughs> a year later somewhere else. <laughs> we don't know where quite, but but she's using a lot of the, the same stuff we used in the no movie for a victim. earlier. Miss Wu once told me if I follow the rules next time. I had a lot of that stuff left over. You know, we burned. You know, we burned what we did during the scene. But I mean, after when the movie was over, I had like all this paper money and all these paper, um, all this uh, incense and everything. And I think I donated it all. But and my best friend Nicole. But uh, yeah, I had a lot of that stuff. I can only hope their souls do not wander. You know, the idea here is that she's continuing on the tradition because she believes uh, that she needs to do this in order to ward off the ghosts now. And in her case, it's Miss Blue. There's the Miss Blue. They're after her. So she needs to appease them. <laughs> and that's it. Wow, it's been a while since I've seen that film, actually. <laughs> From beginning to end. Um, the first cut of the movie, actually, was, I think, um, I think this cut is 100 minutes, but I, the very first cut of this film was over two hours. And I ended up having to cut out, like, 20 minutes or so. I probably should have cut out even more, you know, but in retrospect, too, you know, you always, you always look at your movie, you know, after you do it, and you're like, ah, man, I, mean, I probably could have cut 10, 15 more minutes out of it, but, uh, but yeah, the original cut was a lot longer, believe it or not. This, um, this ending hear this graph uh, what, what's called a graphical end crawl um was the very first time i did one of these and uh i just really enjoy i just really thought you know end crawls they're so boring you know they just it's just white text on black and it goes to the screen i was like i'm gonna try to do something a little different so i ended up putting together this graphical end crawl and i was like oh that's really cool and then from sort of that point forward i i decided most every movie i would do i would do some kind of really cool end crawl sequence um, and uh, I think I did one on real evil that was a really really cool like camcorder vibe and uh, yeah it's, it's always fun to do that kind of stuff you know and I love this musical cue here as well it's, it's just one of my favorite cues too but yeah I mean that that's that's it I mean the movie thanks for you know for for listening to this director's commentary um, there's a ton of stuff on the disc. Uh, it's just loaded with, with um, extra features. And um, it, it was a blast making this movie. You know, it really was for me. Um, and uh, for the actors, for the crew. Um, it, uh, if you're interested in film production at all, um, it's a pretty good example of, of, way, of ways that you can, you know, make, you know, save money and to do stuff yourself uh, when, when it comes to making movies and again uh, if you're interested in, in looking at my book The Filmmaker's Book of the Dead uh, which you can get at Amazon or openpress.com um, there's a lot of information about how we made this particular movie um, in that book um, and and uh, yeah man it's um, uh, it's 2015 and I'm looking forward to making a lot more movies there's a lot of stuff coming up and uh, I hope that I hope everyone enjoyed the, the film and the commentary and it was a blast these clip by the way these uh, that's real calligraphy uh, that a friend of Shirley's did um, and he's, a, he's a calligrapher and he and I think each one of those characters is a different way of saying ghost month you know, for the, for the Chinese Ghost Month, and uh, they did like different ones, and I ended up, I ended up integrating it into uh, some of the menus and the, the the end crawl and some of the, the artwork. That's what those characters actually mean, as far as I know. Shot on Fuji film. Yes, there. Rest in peace, <laughs> Fuji film. That's it, guys. If you're still listening to this, uh, I, <laughs> you're amazing. Because at this point, um, I, I'm grabbing straws. I don't know what else to say other than other than thank you so much for um, for uh, buying, renting, streaming, whatever you're doing to listening to this commentary right now. Thank you so much, and uh, I hope.
hope you continue to check out my movies, dannydraven.com. Find me on Facebook. Find me on Twitter. Until next time, have a great, have a great one, and it's been a pleasure.